Hey Lennies, welcome back to the channel. Yes, new backdrop, new setting. Those of you who watched our last video, you know that we moved and I'm so excited to show you guys the new apartment once it's furnished because I don't really have anything right now except my bed and my desk and a couple things because I pretty much sold everything. I kind of just wanted to start from scratch. So once we're all situated, you'll definitely be the first to get the apartment tour. If you guys have any ideas for a new setup for Lennon, be sure to leave those in the comments below. All right, so let's get into this video. Don't forget to subscribe, smash that like button, and hit the bell for unlimited bunny content. And today's video is sponsored by Skillshare, so big thank you to them. So I wanna talk about something so incredibly important that is brought to my attention all the time. At least once a day I get an email or a DM from someone who wants to dump their bunny or surrender their bunny and surrender their bunny to me above all places. Uh, for some reason, people think I'm some sort of dumping ground for bunnies and I'm not. I'm just an individual living in a one bedroom apartment in Los Angeles. And unless you live in LA, then we're probably very far away from each other anyway. And so I kind of just wanna address the steps that you can take if you find yourself in this position of having to rehome your rabbit. This is a video I really battled with making because I don't wanna promote uh, giving up your bunny, but let's just face it. It's a reality and it's a crisis that we deal with every year There's a period right after Christmas and right after Easter in which bunnies are surrendered or rehomed or dumped because of all of the impulsive buying of rabbits as gifts during those seasons So while I don't love the topic of this video if it means saving a bunny's life then it's a video that has to be made. Now, if there's anybody who empathizes with this situation, it's me because I wanted to give Lennon up after just a week of having her. I instantly regretted it and I'm very open about that in my videos. And now look at us, you know, Lennon's paying the rent, so that could be you one day. No, but on a serious note, no one else is gonna give you this pep talk. If you're searching for answers, if you're trying to Google how to rehome your bunny, I hope that this video helps you make the right decision. And because the last thing that we want is for the bunny to wind up in the wrong hands or on the street, God forbid, because that is often a resort that people take. The way I look at it is as impulsively as you got the rabbit, you may also be trying to get rid of the rabbit impulsively. Think about it. In order to fix the problem, we have to address the roots of the problem. Some of the most common reasons that bunnies are surrendered, they chew, you're allergic to them, they're not litter box trained, you're bored of them or you don't understand how to bond with them. Your landlord doesn't allow animals financial reasons. You've realized you can't afford the rabbit or you have a family member or significant other who does not want the rabbit. So I'm gonna break these down for you. Let's talk about the chewing. Rabbits like to chew, but you know what? All animals are destructive, okay? Babies are destructive, dogs are destructive, cats are destructive. So it's not specific to just bunnies. And sometimes people just like to demonize bunnies because of their chewing. So my advice to you is to bunny proof, which is not that hard. I have plenty of videos on it and there's plenty of articles on it. Provide your bunnies with stimulation, attention, keep them in a section of the house that is away from any valuables of yours. So if they're chewing on your carpet, maybe keep them in the kitchen instead. Where there's a will, there's a way. Litter box training. All rabbits can be litter box trained, and if you give them a litter box with the right contents in the litter box, they will go there. Now I have to say, spaying and neutering perfects the litter box skills 100%, so I really recommend spaying and neutering. Boredom, okay. If you're bored of your rabbit, it's because you're not bonding with them properly, and this is one of the biggest issues that I hear about, is people expecting the bunny to love them immediately upon bringing them home. And I'm here to tell you, it takes time to break that shell. You know, rabbits are a lot like humans in that sense. We don't just trust the first person that we meet. So we should be able to empathize with this more than anything. Spend time with them, share a space with them, get down on their level, let them come to you. I have tons of videos on how to bond with your bunnies and I'm telling you, it just takes a little bit of practice. But once you get the hang of it, they'll become your best friend. And here's a trick, like with most pets, the way to a rabbit's heart is through their stomach. 
allergies. Now, this happened to me when I first got Lennon. I thought I was allergic to her. So I went and got allergy tested and it turned out that I was actually allergic to the Timothy hay that I was giving her. I mean, that thing was giving me major hives, major sniffles. So I made the switch to orchard grass. Now I really recommend you get allergy tested to really try to identify if it's the bunny or something else. Now, if you do happen to be allergic to the bunny, which is not impossible, then talk to your allergist about what you can do to be able to coexist with your bunny. Sometimes that might mean taking an antihistamine or brushing your bunny a little more often, getting rid of a lot of that loose fur. Now, when it comes to finances, I understand the money factor. It's a little scary. It's a little nerve wracking because taking care of another living being costs money, point blank. You gotta get them food every week. You gotta get them hay. So you won't regret setting aside a little bit of money each month in case of a medical emergency or any other financial investment into your bunny. Aside from that, the little things, the veggies, the hay, those are things that you can get for a bargain. And I've made a video on the true cost of owning a rabbit and different ways that you can save money on your rabbit. And also remember that there is a lot of financial aid out there. For instance, different rescues or shelters might offer low income vouchers for spays and neuters. And I also encourage you to research different nonprofit spay and neuter clinics in your area. Okay, landlord. This one's a little tricky. I was in that position as well. I feel like I've been in all of these positions. You'd be surprised guys just how effective talking to someone can really be. If you can find a way to make a compromise with your landlord, try to make them feel more at ease about the bunny. Usually resistance about bunnies comes from a lack of education. If you make it clear that the bunny is potty trained, bunnies aren't dangerous, they're not gonna be a threat to other neighbors, they're not loud, they don't bark. You can also offer to give a pet deposit to cover any future damages, anything that will help put your landlord at ease about the bunny. The other thing I wanna mention is that if you have a therapist or you visit a mental health expert on a regular basis, your therapist can write you an emotional support letter for your rabbit, and that will prevent your landlord from discriminating against you for having an emotional support animal. Now, I only encourage you to take this route if it's honest, don't fake your letter or use a fake therapist or something. I find that doing that only hurts the cause. It doesn't help it. Now, I never want to encourage people to keep their bunnies a secret from their landlords, but I will just say one thing and one thing only. Bunnies are very quiet. That's all I will say about that. If you have a family member or a significant other who does not want your rabbit or does not like your rabbit, I think it's really important for you to sit down and have a conversation with that person or people about meeting in the middle with them. Because like I said, resistance often comes from a lack of education. Address all their concerns and be honest with them about what the alternative really is. You know, tell them, look, if I take the bunny to the shelter, it's probably gonna get euthanized. And, and sometimes you just have to be very matter of fact and very blunt with people in order for them to see the big picture because sometimes people can be emotional and in the heat of the moment, they'll say, I never wanna see that bunny ever again. And then they calm down, they come to their senses and they're like, okay, I didn't mean to say that. And I know this is hard for a lot of you. I get so many messages and emails about how it's your parents, your parents don't want the bunny, even though your parents are the ones who got you the bunny. Show the person that you are gonna take responsibility for your rabbit and their actions. You're gonna clean up after them. You're gonna make sure it's not stinky. You're gonna make sure they're potty trained. You're gonna make sure that the house is bunny proofed and you're gonna do everything in your power to make both parties comfortable and see if they can make a compromise as well and meet you in the middle. Try to spend time as a family with the bunny. Get these other members of your household connected to the bunny because they don't have a relationship with the bunny like you do. They're not as emotionally attached. You're gonna to have to be a little bit of a salesperson here. You're gonna to have to try to convince the person you're talking to that this bunny is worth keeping and that you wanna fight for this bunny. Okay, now, if you have gone through that list and you've tried everything in the book and you still cannot keep your bunny, 
Because I get it, life happens. You get evicted, you lose your job. The one thing you don't wanna do, never, ever, ever dump your bunny on the side of the road, in a park, in a forest, in a prairie, in the mountains, on a hiking trail, anywhere outside. Do not think you are setting it free. Domestic rabbits do not know how to survive in the wild. They are completely dependent on humans. They're prey animals. They'll either get eaten in 24 hours, hit by a car, they'll die of dehydration, starvation, they'll freeze in extreme cold weather, or they'll get a heat stroke. The first thing I recommend is to reach out to your local rabbit rescue. Now, what I will say about the rescues is a lot of them are usually at capacity because they're overwhelmed with homeless bunnies all the time and they prioritize the bunnies that are in most need. So there is a chance that the rescue might say no. However, I still recommend reaching out to them because if they do have room, it's totally worth giving to the rescue. And second, if they can't take the bunny in, they probably know another rescue who can, or they can just point you in the right direction. They have a huge network of rabbit people in their community, vets, fosters. One option that the rescue can offer you is they might say, continue to house the bunny while we look for a home. And this is pretty much what fostering is. It means that you are temporarily giving the bunny a roof over its head while it is up for adoption. Okay, so your next option is to try to rehome the bunny independently yourself. And this can be done through a variety of ways. I recommend reaching out to people that you know personally because it's so much better when you know where the bunny is going, and then you can potentially still visit the bunny, get updates, know how they're doing. I really recommend joining a Facebook group because there's so many that are revolved around bunnies. A lot of rescues also have their own Facebook groups. This is nice in terms of expanding your network and just knowing more bunny people. That's gonna increase your chance of getting the bunny adopted. If you're gonna take an avenue like Craigslist, I just urge you to use the utmost caution when doing so just because because you're getting strangers on Craigslist, people you don't know, and it's really important to vet the person, the family, the home. You wanna pay them a house visit, know exactly where the bunny's gonna be staying, make sure everyone in the family is okay with the bunny, that there aren't gonna be predators in the house, make sure that the person knows about bunny care or that they're actively educating themselves about bunny care, because the last thing that you want is for the bunny to go to a home where they're just gonna be kept in a cage all day and not fed the right diet and maybe ignored. Ask the person, why do you want a bunny? And see what they say. Because the answer is really, really important. If they say something like, well, I want the bunny for my three-year-old daughter, I mean, that's a huge red flag to me because we know that that three-year-old daughter is not gonna take care of the bunny. Always, always make sure that you are advertising with an adoption fee. I personally would do a minimum of 80 bucks because I think that that sets a really high standard. Never ever give a bunny away for free or for you know anything under $40 because bunnies are often taken on Craigslist as snake food. Some people want to breed rabbits. Someone might want to like eat the bunny themselves or to be used for other strange things. There's a lot of abusive people in this world. You just never know. And listen, not everyone on Craigslist is crazy. You know, there's a lot of good people who rescue bunnies on Craigslist. A lot of you guys have rescued your bunnies on Craigslist. So there are some really great happy endings to these Craigslist bunnies. Ask if you can keep in touch with them and get updates on the bunny that way. If you adopted your bunny from a rabbit rescue, usually there'll be a stipulation in your agreement with that rescue to return the bunny if you can no longer keep the bunny. Because I'm pretty sure that that rescue would rather take the bunny back uh, than have you give it away. So definitely reach out to your rescue. And finally, your last, last resort is you can take the bunny to your local animal shelter. But I say it as a last resort because a lot of animal shelters do euthanize for space. So basically, if the bunny doesn't get adopted for many, many months, it's practically sitting on death row. Now you can find some no-kill shelters out there, 
So it is important for you to research and you can always call and ask beforehand. But this option is still 10 times better, I would say, than abandoning the bunny outdoors. And yeah, guys, so that's it. I hope that this information was useful to you. I hope it helps you make the right decision. You were Googling, you were researching how to rehome your bunny and you came across this video for a reason. Okay, the algorithm, the universe, whatever you wanna call it, put this video in your way. I'm gonna tell you what you might not wanna hear. My advice to you is to just keep the bunny, fight for the bunny, and I can promise you, you won't regret it. And you're gonna send me an email, or you're gonna write me a comment, and you're gonna say, Lorelai, my bunny and I have been with each other for five years, and I'm so happy that you talked me into keeping him. All right, guys, as usual, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll see you all soon. Bye. This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions. As you guys know, I'm a crazy plant lady, so I really love this new series, Plants at Home, Uplift Your Space by Christopher Griffin. I've learned all sorts of tips and tricks for how to give my plants the best life possible in this new apartment. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there's no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes. And it's less than 10 bucks a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of a premium membership so you can explore your creativity.